Personal Protective Equipment, Importance, Types, and Good Practices. The information in this video is drawn from OSHA Standard 1910 Subpart I regarding personal protective equipment. Let's talk first about the importance of personal protective equipment. Called PPE for short, personal protective equipment is equipment designed to protect employees from chemical, radiological, physical, mechanical, and electrical hazards. Examples include gloves, goggles, and work boots. Employers are required to modify workplace layout, procedures, material, and workflows as much as possible to reduce the possibility of an employee injury. This could be something like swapping out a hazardous material for one that's more safe, or adding a ventilation system above an employee's workstation. As much as employers would like to provide the perfect work environment, these modifications have a limit. Some work environments still produce risks, and this is where PPE steps in. PPE is the last line of defense against an injury. This means it's super important. Wearing PPE is the only thing between you and a possible injury. How important is PPE? Consider these stats. 2,000 eye injuries occur every day at work in the U.S. 60% of workers with eye injuries were not wearing the proper PPE. Hand injuries send more than 1 million workers to the emergency room every year. And falls, falls are preventable, yet they remain the number one cause of accidental death in the construction industry. It's human nature to think that accidents like this won't happen to us, but the scary truth is that they can and they will if we're not taking the proper measures to ensure our safety. Now that we know the importance of PPE, let's examine the different types that are available. The first type of PPE, and one of the most common, is head protection. Head protection keeps workers safe from impacts and, depending on the type, electrical shock. Hard hats save numerous lives every year. In January of 2011, a crazy story emerged that showed the power of hard hats. Picture this, an 80-pound beam falls from the seventh story of a condo development and hits a worker below on the head facing torso. Of course, the man suffers injuries, but he lives. The police who arrived on the scene credit his hard hat for deflecting the blow and saving his life. Work boots have a few different purposes. The rubber bottoms prevent slipping. Many work boots have solid or steel toes, which protect from penetration or crushing by a falling object. There are even work boots created to protect your feet from chemicals and extreme temperatures. Check with your employer to see which type of boot is most appropriate for your job. You'll notice that the boots in this picture have a higher ankle than a typical shoe would have. Taller boots like these ones keep ankles safe by reducing the chance of a sprain. Safety glasses and goggles protect the eyes and face from debris, dust, and chemicals. There are many, many different types of safety goggles and glasses. Make sure that the pair you use complies with the American National Standards Institute National Consensus Standards. Also make sure that they're appropriate for the hazards that you face in your job. Even if you wear prescription glasses, there's no excuse to not wear your safety glasses or goggles. Prescription glasses are not meant to keep your eyes safe from hazards. You'll want a pair of prescription goggles or special goggles that fit over your everyday glasses. Talk to your employer if you normally wear contact lenses. They might instead invest in a fancy pair of prescription safety glasses for you to prevent any dust or debris from getting trapped between the contact lens and your eye. Eye injuries are extremely common. You'll remember from earlier that 60% of workers with eye injuries were not wearing the proper PPE. Wearing safety glasses and goggles at all times is key to staying safe. Respiratory protection can come from a respirator or a mask. Respirators have cartridges in them that purify the air that you breathe. They protect you from dust, smoke, chemicals, or from an oxygen deficient environment. It's crucial to ensure the respirator is snug against your face, otherwise it's not really protecting you. This might mean, as you see in the picture, that it's below goggles or another set of PPE. It might also mean that you can't grow out that long beard you've been wanting. Sorry. Skin protection. Gloves are the most well-known type of skin protection. They protect hands and fingers from cuts, heat, abrasion, and chemicals. Hand injuries are the number two leading cause of work-related injury, so gloves are an important part of PPE. 
There are a lot of different types of gloves. Each is designed to protect from a different hazard. Check with your employer if you're unsure about what type of glove is appropriate to protect you from the hazards you face in your job. If larger parts of your skin are exposed to hazards, aprons, sleeve guards, suits, or leggings can be used. Sound is measured in decibels. 85 decibels is the loudest environment you should regularly work in without hearing protection. A room full of people talking to one another in regular voices will generate 85 decibels. A running dishwasher is 85 decibels. What if you put that running dishwasher in the room full of people? That would bump the noise level to 88 decibels. Doubling noise only raises it three decibels. It might not seem like it's a lot louder, but it's twice the hazard. When you're working in an environment where noise consistently exceeds 85 decibels, it's important to wear earplugs or earmuffs. Earplugs can be disposable or washable. Both plugs and muffs are designed to protect you from hazardous noise while still allowing you to hear the important things like the fire alarm or someone yelling for your help. Fall protection is any method of keeping a worker safe when working at heights. It could be a safety net, a harness, or a lifeline. Fall protection devices can sometimes feel bulky to wear, but they can save your life. OSHA requires that fall protection be provided at elevations of four feet in general industry workplaces, five feet if you're in a shipyard, six feet in the construction industry, and eight feet in longshoring operations. In addition, OSHA requires that fall protection be provided when working over dangerous equipment and machinery, regardless of the fall distance. Your employer will let you know if you need to use a fall protection system in your line of work. If so, make sure you're wearing it properly and at all times. Protection from drowning comes from life vests, life preservers, and safety nets. Although the majority of adults can swim, drowning protection should be worn by everyone at risk of falling into water on the work site. Wet, heavy clothes, extreme water temperatures, being knocked unconscious, all of these things can strip away the benefits of those swim lessons you took as a kid. If you're working near water, make sure to wear the appropriate protection. Finally, let's talk about some good PPE practices. A thorough inspection of PPE should be performed before wearing it and beginning work. Look for cracks, warps, or tears in the material. If you know the PPE has been compromised, maybe it was dropped from a ladder, stored in the hot back window of a car, had some coffee spilled on it, make sure to find a replacement before you begin work. It might look okay on the outside, but have structural damage that will render it useless. Also check the label on the PPE to find the date the item needs to be replaced. PPE has a shelf life and it's important to pay attention to it. Again, the PPE might look just fine after the date to be replaced, but have unseen damage or deterioration that would keep it from functioning properly. Quite simply, PPE is only effective when worn properly. It's your employer's responsibility to purchase and train you how to use each piece of PPE available on the job. If you wish to provide your own PPE, you must have it approved by your supervisor prior to use. You may not wear your own PPE if it doesn't meet the requirements identified in the appropriate OSHA standards. Make sure PPE is not too large or too small. Improperly sized PPE can create even more of a hazard. If you ever feel like your PPE is uncomfortable or it's impeding your ability to do your job, talk to your supervisor. Likely, it's just a bad fit. Next, make sure you know how to correctly put on and take off your PPE. For example, when you're inserting earplugs, use your opposite arm behind your head to pull the ear and open the ear canal before inserting the plug. It's your employer's responsibility to make sure you know how to wear your PPE the right way. If you're ever unsure, ask. Finally, be consistent. Wear your PPE any time you're exposed to a hazard. This might seem excessive, but you'll get used to it. Your health and safety is on the line, and remember PPE is the only thing between you and the hazard. Some employers have penalties up to termination for not wearing the appropriate PPE. This isn't to scare you or make you feel bad, it's to keep you safe. Finally, take care of PPE. Store it in a cool, dry place to prevent cracking and drying out. If appropriate, wash it after use. Keep any piece of PPE clean and free of debris. Replace any disposable parts, like the filter cartridge and a respirator, 
as soon as you notice wear or reach the expiration date indicated on the part. We learned a lot about PPE. Take a moment after this video to learn about or examine the PPE that you use when you're doing your job. Inspect it. Make sure it's in good working order. It has a proper logo on it. Ask your employer to show you how to properly wear the PPE. Practice putting it on and taking it off. Your employer may administer a quiz after this video to test all that you've learned. Remember, your safety is number one. If you have any questions about the content of this video, just ask your supervisor. Stay safe.